she had a return. A short time ago, and our brother will do so, grasp a friendship in the field. The eye of affection is distinguished. Our association with the pleasure. In the large room, his voice can counsel and advice and urge and labor for the advancement of the principles of our world. And the improvement of the condition of mankind was free to give. But now all is past. The battle of life is ended. And in the narrow limit of the grave, the sorrowful part due to the compiled of the man, in the language of the inspired word of God, we may well be teaching. So teach us to number our days, and we may apply our heart unto you. So teach us to number our days, and we may apply our will. the surviving members of this big, big, big beneficent order, we can resolve them. United in the bonds of friendship, love and truth. So no it is now. Henceforth and henceforth and forevermore. We're carrying out the sacred principle of our time and our institution. Our duty toward each other stop by the grave. Nor can death prevent us. To survive, from practicing these lessons that we have studied to learn in the lives. The widow and orphan of our dear departed dead have claimed upon us that we are a true apostle to certainly the grave of our brother. Do not get satisfied with us. To dry the widow tear and the open heart by tears. By this way, we shall prove to a grand thing world that the triple ties of friendship, love, and truth are living reality based upon the great principle of love that a divine master has shown for all, all men. The words we may use when we consider the seriousness and responsibility of this life. Surrounded by circumstances of the nature to keep up from proper consideration of the higher and noble truth. How can it perform the duty required of us except God and the system? With the knowledge of our frailty and pronouncement to wrong doing, with the certainty of our going to the grave, that has our love. Let us summon all the power, our mind, Call upon him who is here is ever open to the cry of all men. And our lives may be spent in his service, and when the day of dissolution shall come, we may receive the glad salutation. Come and bless my Father. And here is the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And after God, how does all things, how do all things work? We need to submit the spirit of our deceased world, trusting in the favor coming to make us do good. We all may be found acceptable. We come into this world naked and we turn out. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us pray. All I need is eternal God. Do hand our issues of life and death. Grant me to teach thee that the solemn duty we have now performed and make a serious and lasting impression on our minds. Grant me to humbly to preach thee the definition of this, our dear brother, and awaken us whom whom God has greatly prepared a little longer to a good sense of the danger of our people. We were thinking that us in time are that we can draw off in. We are affected from the fleeting enjoyment of this world, this transitory world. To our hearts, gracious God, 
to blow up the weed and to be shot, fired up and very dangerous, full up for every foul, and left up for every laudable undertaking. And after a court of excessive utility, he managed all and died to turn the king. He knew the Christ, the Lord, amen. Farewell, my earthly home. Farewell. Death calls me to the tomb. To a far happier place to dwell in an eternal home. Farewell, farewell, my weeping friends. Death's call I must obey. Oh, may we meet with our ends and love will never decay. Farewell, dear friends, with whom we join in friendship, love, and truth. Oh, how glorious when we join the union of love. Farewell, my, my wife and children dear. My sorrows now are old. And all prepare to meet me there where we shall part no more. Where we shall all be united with the friends in our Savior's love and reign in all eternity in the grand lodge of love. Within the grave there lies the dust so dear to all, and homeward bound the spirit of life to answer to the call. Farewell, dear brother, friend, the friends we freely share. Love's offer, which the showers descend upon thy silent bed. To God, thy spirit, we resign it, give up. So shall we. And one has one family. Wink from his loving cup. And Father, we come to put our love in You have to give the family comfort. Give them ease. Let them know that this. This was your will, not our will. And we have that family we feel, knowing that their love is in good hands. We have to listen to you tonight. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection 
and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whosoever believes in me shall never die. Because I live, you also will live. Our opening hymn is when the roll is called up. Please stand and sing out with joy. as friends to support each other. We've come together as the church to witness to each other the hope of the resurrection in sending Jesus to live and die for us. God showed us a love without limit. In raising Jesus from the dead, God gifts all who believe and trust in his name the gift of eternal life. Our second hymn is, And Can It Be? Let us remain standing and sing.
Let us unite in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, you gave us our birth. You alone know our beginning and our end. You know our needs even before we ask. Support us now with your spirit that as we stand before the mystery of death, we may see beyond the veil of this earthly life to the light of eternity. Speak to us your solemn message of hope through the scriptures. For we follow not as sheep without a shepherd. May our faith give us courage in this present moment. Help us now to trust that just as you have been good to us in this earthly life, your goodness will continue and carry us through into the life to come. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people said, Amen. Let us remain seated and sing a hymn that testifies to our faith, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Please remain seated.
straight from the pulpit. Our scripture this morning will be read from the first scripture, Psalm 16. Then I will be reading from John 14, verse 1 through 6, and then Philippians 4, verse 4 through 9 and 13. Psalms 16. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. John 14, verse 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. The last verse, 13. Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen.
We all know that Lloyd Carter was a prince of a man. And by God's grace and the death and resurrection of Jesus, he still remains a prince of a man, doesn't he? Growing up in Belize, Lloyd was an athlete who ran track and field. He played baseball and soccer. And from early on, he went to the Scots Church every Sunday. He was committed to the church, its worship and theology. But during adolescence, he told me, like all boys, he was tempted to stray and experiment with things that were not good for him. He recalls that he was influenced by a Methodist minister who came to serve as pulpit supply at the Scotch Church. And the minister told him the bottom line was to keep his body clean so he could keep his heart pure before the Lord. The minister told him that in order to talk the talk, he had to walk the walk. And Lloyd said that minister influenced him more than any in his life. When he got of age, he moved to Chicago and worked at Skokie Hospital for over 30 years. And on weekends, he went to dances all over the city. Wearing a suit and tie, Lloyd was known for his good looks and being able to cut a rug on the dance floor. And he liked to party, didn't he? He liked a good party and sometimes even to the wee hours of the morning. But you know, he always found his way here to Second Presbyterian Church when the service began on Sunday morning. Here at Second Presbyterian, Lloyd was known for passing out bulletins as an usher, standing in the back and greeting people with a smile. An ordained deacon, he worked with the Men's Association, serving pancakes at the pancake breakfast. He especially was known for the church rummage sales where he teamed up with Gary Sheets in the long room, enjoying banter and conversation. Wherever he could be of service, Lloyd always said yes. We know he lived an active and full life. He loved the city of Chicago, its sports teams. He participated in his lodge. He especially loved getting together with family and friends, maintaining his ties with those from Belize. When he moved to Symphony Center in his later years, Deacon Nate Battle and I would often bring him hot wings to stimulate his taste buds for good food. Lloyd loved good conversation and he loved Deacon Nate's prayers and also visits from Doug Walters and Eric Flom and calls from Mary Tibbs because this church was his home away from home. He often asked about the Mosses and the Fergusons, the Ochabooters and the Anafis, or that British fellow who liked cricket. His eyes gleamed when he heard of church friends over the years, and he always asked me about the condition of the church. How is the attendance, Pastor? Are we getting any new members? How is the financial giving? And like clockwork, you could always count on him to send in his dues and always send cards at Christmas and Easter to let his home church know that he was keeping them in his prayers. I learned not to visit Lloyd during the evening news because why he liked to keep up with politics and if the evening news was on, we'd get sidetracked. He'd ask me, Pastor, how do you like President Trump? Or what do you think of this fellow Pritzker or Mayor Lightfoot? I came to find out that these were loaded questions. 
Within one or two sentences, we were off to the races. Lloyd was a staunch Republican who had a definite view on things. But one thing we agreed on and shared in common was the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Lloyd knew with the psalmist that a day in the house of the Lord is better than 10,000 in the tents of the wicked. He knew the scripture, the Lord is my light and my salvation, and he feared no man. He knew that the source of his vigor and vitality came from having a soul which came from God and would go to God, and it enlivened his body. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He knew that every day that he lived was a gift. And just as God had given him life and breath, his call was to give back to God and serve the Lord with gladness. He knew that he could do all things through Christ who gave him strength. When I brought the bread and the juice, we held hands together and said the Lord's Prayer. And when he was even unable to eat, we would feed the cup into his lips. Faith was deeply personal to him. Faith was meant to be shared with brothers and sisters in the Lord. And so this morning, I want to say, Lloyd represents the best, the membership of Second Presbyterian Church. And he represents the best of Christians everywhere. In his later years, he was ready to go home, wasn't he? He was ready to be with the Lord. And the last time I saw him, he said word for word with me, the words to Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Peggy, you were there for him. Every moment around the clock, your care, your prayers, your visits, Shauna, you saw him and you loved him like no other. Friends in Christ this morning, we celebrate that every man's life is a plan of God and every woman's life is a plan of God. Every person's life is a witness to the resurrection. We stand before the doors of death amazed at this incredible man who witnessed to us the resurrection hope of Jesus renewed and renewed again and again by his faith in God. Lloyd was a prince of a man. He was royalty among us. He was a true ambassador of Christ. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. We are amazed and awed at the life of Lloyd Alexander Carter. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. And all God's people said, Amen. Our hymn in response to the word is, It is well with my soul. Let us stand and sing for this one.
this time we will have the reading of the obituary and then a reading of any resolutions that have been uh, sent in. Good morning, everyone. Before I read this obituary, there's a few things I would like to say. First of all, thank you, Cousin Peggy and Shauna, for honoring me to be able to read this obituary. Second of all, even though this, this is a tough time for our family, losing Uncle Lloyd, it gives me a lot of pleasure seeing so much family members I haven't seen, some in decades. Where we sometimes feel family is lost, a moment like this restores the love that's embedded in us and the respect we have for our elderly family that brought us all back together for this moment. I thank you, Uncle Lloyd, for that. And just know, family, even though we live states and countries apart, we can't forget who we are and where we came from. We shouldn't just see each other in time of sorrow or huge celebrations like weddings. I know we all care about each other. That's why we're here. And I also know we can do a little bit better. For Cousin Peggy, Cousin Yvonne, Cousin Sheila, you guys are here to say goodbye today to your father. That you love so much, but know that God loves him more. And there's a time for going home for all of us. Peggy and Shauna, you guys have done the most. And God knows anyone that respects and takes care of their parent is highly favored. So with that, Lloyd Alexander Carter was born on May 7th, 1928 in Belize City, Belize, formerly British Honduras, to William Bill Carter and Sarah Rogers Jones. At an early age, Lloyd's godmother, Miss Muriel Ifield, requested of his parents to raise him, and her request was granted. Lloyd attended school in Belize City, and upon graduating, he commenced working at the Belize City Hospital as an attendant. He also worked part-time as a firefighter with the fire department of Belize City. Lloyd was an active participant in track and field sports. In his early age, he won several awards for his outstanding sportsmanship. Lloyd was a sergeant in the Belize Home Guard Force, a member of Grand United Order of Odd Fellows Lodge in Belize, a member of Scotch Church, now Presbyterian Church, and also a member of Belize Social Club and Nursing Association in Belize. Lloyd Carter immigrated to Chicago, Illinois in 1962. He immediately joined the Grand Order of Odd Fellows Lodge in Chicago. He searched and found a church home, the Presbyterian Church. He became a faithful member and was active until his health began to decline. However, he remained a supportive member in good standings up until the time of his demise. Upon arrival in Chicago, he also sought and pursued the newspaper for jobs availabilities. He worked, he was hired at Sokey Hospital 
in the Department of Medical Supply in Soki. He worked there for over 30 plus years and retired at the age of 65. Lloyd Carter was a conversationalist. He always took pride in conversing with his daughter and granddaughter, Lithia, known as Peggy, and Shauna. Respectively, they looked up to him as a gentle giant. He expressed to them his appreciation for the care attended to him by the doctors, nurses, entire staff at the Symphony Nursing Home of Lincoln Park. But more importantly, he credited them for the relentless attention, care, and love they both gave to him without wavering during this time of need. He also thanked everyone who took time and came to visit him. Several of Lloyd's family members has preceded him in death as follows. Parents, William Bill Carter and Sarah Rogers Jones, his daughter, Coretta Carter Usher, two brothers, Duncan Barrow and Dave Cunningham, his five sisters, Miss Eunice Piscasio, Miss Griselda Cunningham, Miss Naomi Cunningham, Miss Violet Rowland, and Miss Olive Kendrick. Other families that Lloyd Carter leaves to mourn, his passing are three sisters. Miss Ann McFarlane, Miss Ethel Smith, and Miss Helen Henry. His beloved daughter, Miss, Liz Miss Lithia Peggy Carter, Miss Yvonne Carter, also Miss Sheila Carter, Miss Valerie Carter, and Miss Beverly Carter Harris. Also, two sons, Lloyd Jr. and Ezio. Carter, 19 grandchildren, numerous great-grandchildren, a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. He will surely be missed. We love him, but God loves him best. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. For my cousins who don't know or because we haven't seen each other in so long. 11 brothers and sisters, three of them until a week and a half ago, four of them still alive in their mid to upper 90s. How beautiful is that? In order of brothers and sisters, starting from birth order, there was Duncan, Eunice, Criselda, Naomi, Dave, Olive, Violet, Anne, Ethel, Lloyd, and Helen. And that's who we are. I thank you so much for having me here today. I love you, my family. Good morning to the family, to the pastor, and friends. I am Derek David Stinson, past noble father, the noble grand of Caswell Lodge, number 12083. I first met Lord when I was a teen, back in, I don't know, it must have been. 73, 72, uh, I was going to Art Fellow Affairs with my grandparents, and Lloyd was a member of West Chicago Lodge number 3929. <clears throat> and he used to always say, uh, Derry, that's what he called me. He said, when you grow up, you should join the Art Fellows. And I would always tell him, no, 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 not me. I ain't, I ain't got time for that. I want to play basketball and baseball and football. 
but I kept going to those events, and he would always encourage me. And he would bring his granddaughter uh, around with him. And when I became an adult, uh, I joined the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows. Uh, Caswell Lodge, number one, two, or A3, both of us joined at a later because I joined a lodge called Cushite Lodge when I was a young man. And as time went on and, and some of the uh, Ghanaians and Nigerians that belonged to his lodge decided to move back home, we merged the lodges and came Caswall. He was very supportive, very encouraging. He always pushed me to, to get degrees, uh, to take a higher office, and I did all of that. Uh, and he was always a welcome friend and a smile. And he would uh, chastise me if I did something wrong or if I was out of order. Brothers, will you stand? Resolution and memory of past normal father, Lord A. Carter. Whereas, on Monday, 1.30 a.m., September 25th, 2023, past normal father, Lord A. Carter, answered the call of his heavenly father and entered into eternal rest. And whereas, Brother Carter faithfully served in lodges from Belize to Chicago of the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows, America, and Jurisdiction for over 70 years, and also in the past Grand Master's Council, number 608, and the Patriarchy, number 300. And whereas we remember his sincere commitment, profound wisdom and advice during our sessions, and his melodious voice in singing the hymns of this grand old order is truly missed. And whereas the brothers of Caswell Lodge, number 12083, and the entire membership of the American Jewish Station joined his daughter Peggy and his wonderful family in mourning his passing. Therefore, be it resolved that the entire organization extends condolences and reminds the family to seek comfort in these words from Apostle Paul. As long as we in these bodies, we are away from the Lord, but we live by faith, and not by what we see. We should be cheerful because we would rather leave these bodies and be home with the Lord. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the bereaved family and a copy placed in the archives of Caswell Lodge, number 12083, in witness of, we herewith set our hands in a fixed the seal of the Grand United Order of Our Fellows in America and Jewish Station on the seventh day of October in the year of our Lord, 2023. Derek David Stimson, Noble Grand, Ernest Young III, Permanent Secretary. Greater Works Church of God, where all things are possible, Pastor Rick and Donna Thomas. Condolence to the family of Lloyd Carter. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14:27. It is said that earth knows no grief that heaven cannot share, and God knows our every pain and sorrow because of his care. In this, your honor of grief, your hour of grief and pain and sorrow, know that God both 
know that both God and the host of heaven share with you in this the loss of your loved one. Be encouraged and know that Jesus and his unselfish love will comfort and console you. God's sufficient grace and strength will guide you, guide your steps through this period of bereavement and adjustment in the weeks and the days to follow. Cherish, cherish the memories of Uncle Lloyd Carter and emulate that which was beautiful in his sight, in his life. Weep not as those who have no hope, but know that God will assure that your tomorrow will hold healing for your sorrows of today. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not onto thine own understanding. Put your faith and trust and hope in him, for he is able to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We, the pastors, ministerial staff, and the Greater Works Church of God family, and ex extend our heartfelt sympathy and love to the family and friends of Lord Carter. You are in our thoughts and prayers, and we pray that the precious love and grace of God will bring your hearts comfort and peace during this time. Respectfully and sorrowfully submitted, Pastor Rick Thomas and Reverend Dr. Donna Thomas and the Greater Works Church of God family. Morning. My name is Oliver Dugard, and I'm here representing the Chicago Belizean Healthcare Organization, which Mr. Carter was a member. But before I start my remarks, I would say this is more about family. My mother and Lloyd were friends, neighbors on New Road in Belize City. As he would joke, and him and Brian Pitts would joke to me, they knew me before I knew myself. So, I'll just say a few words for someone who's a dear friend of my family. Now, today, you know, our heart is heavy as we gather to honor the life of Mr. Lloyd Carter. But we're also celebrating the Ch Chicago Belizean community. Mr. Carter was a cherished member of the Chicago Belizean Healthcare Organization. He touched countless lives with his kindness, compassion, and dedication to helping others. Lloyd never forgot Belize. You know, even in my last conversation with him, we were talking, and the man asked about politics. <laughs> you know, how Belize to run, as you knew of my trips going back there. We could always depend on him to show up at our events. And you know who he's always with, right? Mr. Byron Pitts, service to community. He would always contribute to the fundraising effort, the dance or whatever events we are having to support Belize. Through that effort and, and with others, we were able to send money of, of, of medical ship. We will send many shipments of medical supplies to Belize, in addition to donating to the education efforts of many of the nurses that were going through training and needed help. And that was the, the fo focus of the Chicago Belizean Healthcare Organization. Lord Carter was part of a huge migration that occurred after the 1961 hurricane. That group was part of our greatest generation. They came here to work, established a supportive community in the Chicagoland area, sent weekly remittance back to Belize, and established social clubs and organizations to support each other here in Chicago. Clubs like our own Chicago Belizean Healthcare Organization that was founded by Ms. Norma Davis, or the Chicago Day in the Park Committee by Ms. Sylvia Manderson. I say these names because he was part of this community. That's why we're here today, to support him and show our love for this community, 
And there are many others, and I'll see a few names. You know, Dr. Philip Maskell, you know, Patrick and Sharon Stain, Ms. Bertie Haggerty, Mr. and Mrs. Mendez, Tawala, and a few names that helped us without many efforts to, to fundraise and help Belize. You know, musicians like Don Kiman, Lucio, Pino, even my brother, Soka King, were always together. This community always came together. We had Mr. Bob Renault and our very own Flora Anderson Chestnut, that we are proud because we are Belize and the jewel that's in our heart. We never forgot. We helped each other and we're here. And he was part of that. Lloyd leaves behind a meaningful legacy of service to the country of Belize, starting with his time in the Home Guard and work at the old Belize City Hospital. Mr. Carter's impact and service to our community, like those mentioned before, will never be forgotten. May we continue his work and carry in his memory in our heart to service to others, care for our countrymen and women, and love for our beloved jewel of Belize. May he rest in peace. With all these resolutions and testimonies and adding the words of our hearts and minds, let us go to God, the prayers of the people. Eternal God, you alone are God, God of past, present, and future. We praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for all those who are dear to us, who are with you now. We name them in our hearts before you in silence. We especially thank you for your son, Lloyd, whom you have received into the arms of your mercy. We thank you for all that was good and tender about Lloyd, all that was strong and vibrant and healthy, for his deep and dear faith, for his friendship with others, for his ability to laugh and his sense of humor. We thank you for his sturdy, righteous values, his love for good food and good music, a good party and dancing. We thank you for his love for his homeland and his continued service to his country. We thank you for all the special ways in which he showed that he cared and all the ways he touched and blessed us. Gracious God, in this occasion, you've brought us together as family and friends. Keep true in us the love by which we hold one another. Hold the family close together. Keep their love for each other strong through each passing year. Good Lord, grant faith to us who live here on earth. Help us to believe in that which we cannot see and trust that your presence will lead us through our years and reunite us with all those whom we have loved, all who trust in your holy name, and bring us at our final moment to that heavenly banquet, to the light and radiance of your countenance, the joy and glory of your presence. 
In all these things, we pray trusting in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life that is everlasting. And now hear us as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Please stand for the charge and the benediction. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all, for the Lord is near. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is Onward, Christian Soldiers, and we invite you, uh, we invite the family to lead out after the first verse, and we will all go into Fellowship Hall where a meal will be hosted by the family and our board of deacons. So please, stand, please remain standing and sing, and then we'll process into Fellowship Hall for a shared meal.